Well, let's start this fishing report with with my man, the hot hand today, Mr. Paul Messina. <laughs> Has been lights out today. Walleyes and sheepies. Nice walleye. Right on, brother. Yeah, brother. We've had a good we've had a pretty good morning. Sure so we well, came we came down I am nothing if not a man of the people. And the people said, while I had my boat on the trailer, that I had to come down. I had to come down to the east end because the east end is where all the walleyes are at. So, Paul and I launched this morning. It's Monday. We launched this morning down on the east end. And again, I've been launching at Godfrey and at, at uh, South Shore here the last week because I've had the boat on the trailer. And everybody says, Matt, you're not far enough into the east end. So they still weren't happy with me coming this far down. They said, you got to go all the way down. So I took Paul this morning and we launched at Marion Manor. Um, first time I've ever launched my boat at Marion Manor. And as soon as we get there, we we uh, we met a guy that, that follows the channel. What was his name? Tony. Tony. We met Tony. He comes over. He goes, hey, Matt. He goes, nice to see you down here finally. He goes, but the fishing sucks. <laughs> so we're like, ah, we'd only been here five seconds. And he told us the fishing sucked. But I said, well, you know, whatever, fishing's fishing. And we out we came. Yep. And I had originally thought about going right to Lewis Point. Then I was thinking about maybe Messenger Shoal. And I wanted to have a little something in mind of where we wanted to go. So we went past Lewis Point. We looked a little bit. And I didn't see much for marks that, that made me want to stick around. So we kept going down. What would you say this bay is? Messenger, Messenger Bay? bay. Yeah. And you guys have to excuse me. I'm not intimately familiar with the far east end, north or south side. So, I I mean, I know some landmarks. Obviously, Lewis Point sticks out like a sore thumb. And I can see Shackleton Point way up to the, way out to the west. Um, but we found a piece of structure. You want again? Oh, I thought you were on again. Um, I am on again. Look at that. You know you're fishing with high quality, super sensitive rods. When you can feel those gobies on the end of these JT rods, you can feel them. You, they say they bite it, whatever you want to say. You can feel them out there on it. Um, oh, and speaking of JT rods, big shout out to the boss, the owner, Joe Bricko. Uh, him and his partner, Dylan Mackey won a uh, the Minnesota championship uh, it was a walleye tournament on Lake of the Woods they had over a hundred pounds in two days that's that's pretty impressive so congratulations to you guys um, and way to way to keep the JT rods on a national forefront I'll tell you they're some of the nicest rods um, on the market today period end of story they are so sensitive, so light, so responsive. I know you don't have to have a high-end rod to catch fish, but when you're ready for a tool that really is a high-end, specific, high-performance tool, JT rods are without question the rod of choice. Um, feel everything. Yep. You on again? <laughs> He's on fire today. On fire. You think he just makes pieces? Nuh-uh. He catches fish. And he wears them out. Let's see if I got to net this one. It's coming right to the surface. What do we... I'll scoop this one real quick. Yeah, I think he would. Camera... Oh, he might be a little short. But nonetheless, pretty gold color. Look at that. Beautiful. I love those teeth. <laughs> um... <laughs> well, we, he just he, Paul's making Paul's making fun, but but like I say, we didn't know where to go, so we came down off Messenger, and I saw on the on the uh, on the map that there was a little. It's not an island. It's not marked. It doesn't come up that high, but there was a shelf out here off the outer side, the the north side of Messenger Bay. We got on the deep edge of that and. You can see it's very flat. Now, there's a ripple right now, but for most of the morning, we were almost in glass conditions. High sun, glassy, calm, and, 
and people will tell you, you know, Mike, Mike Urema said something on the, uh, on the live there last week or two weeks ago, how, uh, I thought you were out again. I'm like, holy cow. Um, flat, calm, sunny days on a night of lake are some of the toughest to catch fish in. We've, we've been catching right, right from, right from sunbreak, sun up this morning well, since we got out here. Then we've drifted the same spot now three times and kind of just meandered around. Um, I don't know how many walleyes we've caught. 15 maybe? Yeah. 20 between us? I mean, I've, maybe not that many. You've had more than I, but I bet you you've got at least 10 or 12 walleyes. At least. At least. I, I lost count on sheep's head, man. We caught a lot of... Big. So we had some big perch sheep. and some big sheep's head. How big was your sheepy? 15-1. 15-1. That was a slop. <laughs> That was a big one. Um, man, they're fun to catch. I know people don't like them. They don't respect them. But, boy, they fight hard, and they're a lot of fun. And, and right now, they are biting. We, we were talking earlier. I don't know if they're a fall spawn or not. I've never really paid attention. It would make sense that if they were, because all summer long here, they've been on the rocks, which would be where they would spawn, I would guess. And, boy, they have been active. I mean... We had them today choking blade baits, jigging minnows. I mean, it, it doesn't seem to matter what, what you put in front of them. They've just been throttling it. So always a lot of fun. Um, now, we did find our best from the deeper side of things. Now, that, that last walleye Paul just caught came in, in 17 foot of water. We we're up on the top of the crown of this little, this little shoal. When we were around the north on the deep side of it is where we caught all of our, our better fish and most all of them. And that was from 27 to 32. So we were a little deeper. Just jigging. That's all we've been doing. Blades and, and shiver minnows. I think we've been, and most of the fish have been on blades today. Yeah. Uh, Chester copper pot. That I-1 blade bait has been incredible for me today. Yep. That copper perch from I-1. Um, we call it Chester copper pot. That's been his best. I had the, uh, I had homie going early. I caught the, I caught a big fish this morning at 22. Um, nice big healthy fish on a on a homie blade, and then I switched over to that silver lemon lime perch with the big triangle scales in it. Um, I've done I've done a few on that, so I don't know that it necessarily mattered. We've had high bright sunny skies all morning long, surface temp. Down on this end is 74, which I'm a little surprised about. It was 72 on the other end uh, yesterday, two days ago, Saturday. Um, so it's been a fun morning, especially when we came out into water that I've never fished here before in this particular spot. Paul has because he used to have, they used to have a camp in the area, but we kind of came down blind and we found them. So, um let that be a lesson to everybody. Don't don't be scared of a new spot. Just go and find on your on your first off. You got to figure out on the map where you want to go and where you think they're going to be, and then you got to go to that spot and then you got to search around with your electronics until you find some marks, and then you figure out how you're going to attack them. Are you going to spot lock on them? Are you going to drift? Are you going to troll? Whatever the case may be. Um, and now these fish will be moving too. Um, in the in the next in the coming you know weeks, so don't be afraid to go looking. You know, and if you have a spot that you liked and they've been at for all the you know for a while and they're not immediately there, and then you start doing bigger circles until you find them again. But they're around. Um, Hopefully, you meet Tony, and Tony tells you there's no fish on the end of the lake. Right. Thanks, Tony. He told us there was no fish, and then we found fish. So that's awesome. And I hope he did well this he morning. Was he was pulling harnesses. Yes, he was. Um, so. Yeah, I think that'll be our day. We got to get out of here. Thanks, brother. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we will talk to you guys soon. I don't know about tomorrow. I, I've, I've got to finish this job I'm on. So the next, the next time I'll be out, my guess would be Friday morning. Hopefully I'll be done by then. It'll be the start of the long holiday weekend. Um, Paul and I are trying to make plans possibly to go do something somewhere for uh, a little more involved for next Monday's trip for Labor Day. So stay tuned. Have a great day. Have a great Monday. You can't have a great week unless Monday starts out great. So start it great. Just tell yourself, I'm going to have a great week and go out and do it. 
That's just, we just got to set our minds to it. And that's what we're going to do. So we will see you guys soon. Have a great day. And as always, keep your tip up. Keep your tip up.